We've all heard the stories about mammoths that have been flash frozen up in the Arctic, sometimes with buttercups in their mouths. That's how the story goes. And many people associate these events with the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis and or catastrophe that happened 12,900 years ago. But that couldn't be further from the truth. The majority of the flash frozen mammoths up in the Arctic are from earlier than the Younger Dryas. And tonight we're going to unravel what's going on. Now, the fact that there have been flash frozen mammoths found is true. Just none of them are flash frozen at the Younger Dryas boundary. And that's intriguing. In a paper that came out about five years ago, November of 2017, impact related microspherules in late Pleistocene Alaskan and Yukon muck signify recurrent episodes of catastrophic emplacement. Well, this paper, the most recent paper on all the flash frozen mammoths, lead to a different and quite interesting conclusion. And so stick with us to the end here. Now Firestone is one of the authors on this paper and he came out with the 2007 Younger Dryas Impact Hypothesis, as well as five other authors. And what they found in this study is miraculous. They found large quantities of impact-related microspherules and other cosmogenic indicators found in the fine-grained sediments retained within seven out of nine radiocarbon-dated late Pleistocene mammoths and bison. And these sediments were inside of their skull fragments. Now, the well-preserved fossils were recovered from frozen muck deposits. And these are organic rich silts that are exposed within the Fairbanks and Klondike mining districts. And you're looking at some of those bone piles right here. In addition to the microspherules, elevated platinum abundances were found in sediment analysis from three out of four fossil skulls. And in view of this evidence, the mucks and their well-preserved but highly disrupted and damaged vertebrae and botanical remains have been reinterpreted in part as blast deposits that resulted from several episodes of air bursts and ground ice impacts within the Northern Hemisphere during the late Pleistocene from 46 to 11,000 years ago. Such a scenario might also be explained by encounters with cometary debris in Earth-crossing orbits, specifically the Torrid complex, that was generated by fragmentation of a large short-period comet within the inner solar system. And this paper suggests that the comet that it resulted in the Younger Dryas impact 12,900 years ago had been around for over 40,000 years, wreaking havoc on the Northern Hemisphere and impacting the Laurentide ice sheet for tens of thousands of years. <laughs> Absolutely mind-blowing. Now, during the time period leading up to the, lace, the last glacial maximum, about 23 to 19,000 years ago, when eustatic sea level was substantially lower and about 300 to 400 feet lower. Alaska and the Yukon Territory were part of the largest circumarctic area to remain unglaciated, and it was called Beringia. And you can see the map of it here, where Russia and Alaska are now connected due to low sea levels. And this Beringia extended from eastern Siberia across the exposed Bering Strait region into Alaska and western Canada. The glacial steppe environment of Beringia was perfect for plio-pleistocene tundra grassland plant communities. 
as well as for the now extinct mammalian megafauna, replicit permafrost within the region has preserved an, an extraordinary frozen record of plant, pollen, and insects, as well as vertebrate fossil remains, as well as their DNA. Now, early expeditions to Alaska and the Yukon Territory found large quantities of bones, megafauna bones, just lying on beaches, riverbanks, and even in minor stream valleys. And even greater collections of these fossils were made after industrial-scale placer gold mining operations began in the Fairbanks and Klondike districts. And this happened early in the 20th century. Otto W. Geist undertook extensive fossil collecting in Alaska on behalf of the American Museum of Natural History. And in a typical year, like 1938, he shipped more than 8,000 select specimens weighing nearly 8 tons to New York City. This man was getting rich on Ice Age bones. Now, the fossil bones collected included those of bison, mammoth, horse, muskox, moose, lynx, lion, camel, mastodon, bear, and caribou, with many of these animals also appearing, appearing as frozen, frozen partial carcasses or even mummies. The three most common genera found were bison, mammoth, and horse. And that represents more than 90% of Beringia's large mammalian biomass. Many tens of thousands of specimens were collected in the early 20th century from Alaska and the Yukon Territory. And hundreds to thousands more are still being recovered every year from mines in the Klondike District alone. It's absolutely mind-blowing. Now let's take a look at what's going on here. This is a schematic cross-section of a creek valley sediment near Fairbanks, Alaska. It's showing the stratigraphic relationships between primary loess, which is the Gold Hill and Engineer loess, and you can see up here on the legend which those represent. So the, we have... We're showing the, stri the stratigraphic relationship between the primary loess, the gold hill, and the engineer loess, and retransported loess, or the muck. And so, in this picture, which color is the muck? Well, I don't really know here. It's probably the Golding's forest bed. Oh, yeah, and ready bullion formations. There it is. <laughs> it says it right there. Okay, so these are mass wasting deposits. And then you have gold bearing gravel. And then you have the quaternary stratigraphy. So, what this stratigraphy shows is that there is episodic mass wasting events pushing these bones and preserving them or these animals into these massive flood marls. And it's quite evident based on, well, the amount of material that's at this location. You can even see in the deposition in the hillside plant material that is tens of thousands of years old that looks like it was buried yesterday. This photograph was taken in 1941 at the Cripple Creek Mine located just west of Fairbanks, Alaska with Frank C. Hibben, a very famous geologist. And he's in fact holding a broken mammoth's humerus in the upper photo here. So Otto Geist on August 4th, standing next to a runoff stream from hydraulic jets, used to thaw and wash away the muck, overburden, and expose the gold-bearing gravels. Note the logs and branches and other plant material protruding from the fine-grained frozen muck. Now, these mucks have been frozen for over 40,000 years in some instances, which is 
mind-blowing, in my opinion. And let's get to some of the evidence of cosmic catastrophe. Here we're looking at um, a photograph of an Alaskan mammoth skull fragment that they recovered these microspherules from. Mammothus primigenius. And this sample was collected in the Fairbanks Mining District back in 1948. The skull, and therefore subsequent microspherules, were dated to 48,200 years, plus or minus 2,000. Nowhere near the Younger Dryas event. And here we have a bison skull with horns. Just look, it's fantastic. This is a photograph of an Alaskan bison skull, bison priscus, from the collection recovered at Fairbanks Creek in 1954. And as you would guess, there were microspherules inside. And this skull may be dated to around 18,635. And then we come to another uh, piece of bison skull here that you can see in this photograph. This is from the Territorial Government Collection in Whitehorse, and it was recovered at Home State Gulch in the Klondike District. This skull piece and the subsequent spherules had been dated to 29,065, plus or minus 100. So we're starting to put a picture together. And we just showed you some of the examples. And here is the complete data set. This is the megafaunal regional or global extinction event age ranges as identified by Cooper et al., in the late Pleistocene Eurasian and North American ancient DNA and paleontological data sets. And it's plotted with climate intervals determined by O18 ice cores from Greenland. Red bars with taxonomic names in, indicate the youngest dates for the events. And the green and black... North American bars indicate dates-based estimates of the last occurrence in temporal ranges of 95% confidence. This is the range of these species when they emerged and when they became extinct. And down below here, we have the oxygen, ice, oxygen O18 graph, which is showing you the dance scarred Ershka cycles which occur about every 1,500 years or so. But the blue dots, and this is what we want to talk about, these are the flash-frozen mammoths and bison. And some of the most spectacular flash-frozen mammoths are 40,000 years old, 41,000. Some are 48,000, 37,000. 30,000, 29,000, and 18,6. None of them fall on the Younger Dryas boundary at 12,9. But the extinction certainly occurred on this boundary. So what are we to make of this? Well, it appears as if not only were there Don Scott Ersker cycles going on, but at the same time there were chunks of comet coming in and smashing into the ice causing massive floods and literally blowing apart the animals. Do you remember looking at the specimens? Most of them are just fragmentary chunks. Quite telling. But the fact that most people don't know the actual data, and we're showing it to you here, that the flash frozen mammoths and bison are all much older than the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis suggests. So these were more minor events that were building up to the big boom that happened 12,900 years ago, affecting most of North America. 
and the evidence is clear. I mean, these plant debris look like they were buried yesterday. And yet they all date from 18,000 to 48,000 years old. Holy macaroni. What's going on? That's a boom to knowledge. More to come. Hope you got something out of the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. Facts will be revealed. Feelings will be hurt. But we're here not to scare you, to prepare you and inform you. We love each and every one of you. Be safe. That's a boom. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do. We love you.